Good morning all. I fancy building something today so I thought I'd uh, continue the build of this little electronics kit. Uh, it's got lots of nice colourful LEDs on it so that's a good thing. So what is this device? Well if you look on eBay it's variously described as either a music fancy lantern suite because it's got music and lights or a dream birthday gift LED lights whatever. In fact, the easiest way to find it on eBay is just to type in CD4060, which is the CMOS uh, logic chip that this thing uses. And uh, yeah, you'll find lots of CD4060s, but then you'll start finding these kits. So here we have the new surface mount device Musi music fancy lantern suite DIY kit. Uh, another surface mount one here, but if you keep looking through, you'll find some through hole ones. Here's a, a SMD Music Fancy Lantern Suite with 5mm LEDs. Uh, oh, actually, that is still the SMD one. Let's keep looking. Ah, right, here is the Dual in Line uh, through hole version Dream Light Birthday Gift Suite. And uh, if you absolutely want this exact one with the green PCB, well, there is one here I've uh, found, and uh, the brown PCB one's obviously very similar. And then there's another green PCB version uh, through hole with a dual inline chip here. So you can still get this version. So what does it do? Uh, well, it plays music. So if I switch on my power bank and press this switch, and perhaps peel that back a bit. Uh, so it plays happy birthday to you. Now it didn't when I first built this because there's a bit of a problem on here and that is that they drive from the little music chip uh, the transistor directly without a, a base resistor and that on mine was causing it to just lock up. So I had to cut the track and add this uh, 10k, I think that is 10k resistor uh, and now it does play, albeit a bit out of tune. That top note is really bad. So that's the birthday bit explained. Uh, what about the lights bit? Well, it has just lots of LEDs, uh, three driver transistors, because these are driven in groups, and the uh, signals, the source of the signals for these LEDs comes from the CD4060. So I suppose we'd better look at the uh, that CMOS chip to try and find out a bit more about it. So here it is, um, it's a 14 stage ripple carry binary counter or divider and oscillator. Uh, it's one of these strange combo chips. Uh, I was never into CMOS much when I was younger. I was always into TTL and TTL chips never had these strange combinations of functions, uh, but CMOS often do. So here's the uh, functional diagram and the logic diagram. You've got a 14 stage uh, binary ripple counter this only shows five of the stages, but there are actually 14 of these flip-flops. So that the frequency you generate here is divided in half, and then in half again, and then in half again. So 14 stages, that's quite a lot of division, 2 to the power of 14. But there are also these logic gates uh, here, an inverter and an, uh, well, it's an AND gate with an inverting input. Uh, this shows it slightly different. This shows it as a NAND gate. Oh, that shows it as a NAND gate. And the inverted input is here as an inverter. And what you can do is you can put a capacitor and a resistor um, on these gates and turn this into a little clock. And here's how you do the uh, clock oscillator thing. Uh, they call it the RC oscillator, resistor capacitor. Um, you put uh, a timing capacitor here on pin 9 and a timing resistor on Rx, either side of this inverter. And here's the formula for the frequency of oscillation, 1 over 2.3 times RT times CT. Now here's the schematic of the uh, birthday dream fancy lights lantern gift whatever it's called uh, and you can see that they've implemented the clock uh, here using resistors and capacitor and a variable resistor there so we can change the clock frequency so let's see how that ties up with uh, this diagram from the data sheet well they've got the timing capacitor this is a one microfarad to pin nine uh, the resistor external that's this variable resistor to pin 10 They've got a resistor here, R2, to pin 11, but this capacitor C2 they've decided not to bother with. 
And uh, looking at the rest of the circuit, we've got these uh, Q outputs. They've not used Q1, 2, 3, and 4, or even Q0 if it exists. I'll have to recheck that. Q5, 6, and 7 go out to the three groups of LEDs uh, switched or uh, current provided by these transistors. But notice again, there's no base resistor between the transistor and the outputs of this CMOS chip. So uh, how... <laughs> How are they getting away with that? These PNP, they're going to be putting a lot of current potentially through these transistors. Uh, we'll have to see whether it works. If it doesn't, we might consider adding base resistors. Then there's also this strange arrangement of these three diodes. This is obviously acting as some sort of AND or OR gate, uh, looking possibly for three highs here, and then feeding uh, that signal back to reset. So it allows it to count up to a certain count and then resets the chip. That's really interesting. And uh, here you can see that they also did the same with uh, this transistor in the music part of the circuit. Now this is an entirely separate circuit. It's not connected with the lights part in any way other than uh, ground and VCC. And uh, here there's the base of the transistor running straight into the output of this music chip. And it wouldn't work until I put uh, a current limiting base resistor in that line. So what I think I'm going to do is uh, start assembling this kit, but do it sort of bit by bit. I think what I'll do is I'll put the chip in and these clock components, which are all up here, and then take a look on the scope and see if we can see uh, the oscillations of the, uh, the main clock and then all the uh, frequency divided outputs coming out of this chip. Now, in the old days, these uh, CMOS chips were always very static sensitive, so you had to be careful how to handle them, but this one just seems to be shoved into a bag. And I did notice here on the data sheet, it does say uh, inputs and outputs are protected against electrostatic effects. So maybe on these new versions of the CMOS 4000 series, they do have protective diodes on the inputs and the outputs. Uh, so based on that, now this isn't necessarily an NXP chip, but it's probably a fairly modern chip. We might better get a, a date code off it. I'm going to assume that this is going to be tolerant of static uh, and I'm just going to handle it as I would a TTL chip. Uh, well, this one is a Texas Instruments chip, and it looks like the date code is probably 1992. Uh, we'll just see what happens. And uh, in one of these uh, eBay listings, uh, it says, note, there's no USB female socket or IC socket in the kit. So they're obviously trying to cut the cost of this kit, and they've taken those two components out, but they are in the one I've got. Uh, yeah, so I do have this IC socket, so I am going to use it. So that's the first thing I'm going to solder in. Uh, then I'm also going to solder in capacitor C4, which is the 1 microfarad. We can check that that's a 1 microfarad later. And these two resistors and the pot. So let's do that now. And uh, I'm feeling quite pastoral today, so I thought I'd go for a green sponge with a smiley face hole. Now, while I'm waiting for my soldering iron to warm up, I'll put a link uh, to the post bag video. Actually, it was called post box because this came in a box. A bit weird. Uh, up here, so that's the post bag uh, video when I received this thing and uh, built it, but couldn't get it to work, I think. And then there's an update video uh, where I added this 10K resistor because I worked out what was wrong with this music circuit. Uh, so that one's up here. And uh, so that you've got the full background on this kit because of course this bit's already been built. So get this. let's get this uh, IC socket soldered in. I'm quite liking actually using Bluetech as a sort of helping hands type thing at the moment. So I'm just sticking that down uh, with blue tack. Let's get these uh, socket pins soldered. Oh, they're not taking the solder very well. They must be a little bit tarnished. So I'm just having to leave that on there just a fraction longer than I normally would to get it to run around the socket pin. But yeah, they're basically soldering. That's not too bad. Okay, I'll just finish that off. Yeah, because of the tarnishing on those pins, they're not quite as pretty as I would have liked. But uh, I can see that they have sort of enveloped each of the pins. So that's good enough. Okay, C4. It's the only capacitor in the kit. Uh, it's one microfarad, 50 volts. 50 volts seems a bit excessive, but uh, they were obviously good value. So that goes in there. The pitch of these uh, legs doesn't quite match that, so it is going to be a bit splayed. 
Now this crosshatch area, or on this one it's just a lined area, is normally negative, uh, but I just want to check that just in case someone's designed a funny symbol. Uh, so let's just flip that over, and on the reverse we can see that the other one, the non-negative side, goes to IC pin, well that's 1, 2, 8, so that's 9. So uh, it's looking like positive of C4 to IC pin 9, let's just check that. And uh, yeah, that's here, positive of C4 goes to IC pin 9, so that's fine. Uh, that is going to be a very high profile component. Normally you'd put the low profile components in first, like the resistors and the diodes. But since I'm only building this clock section, and then I'm going to follow on building the rest of it, uh, I'm just going to have to live with the fact that I'm building this in a non-standard sequence and it's going to be slightly more awkward when I come to the other components. Oh, well, never mind. Oh, that's nice. I like that. The uh, 1.5 meg resistor and this 220K down here are both proper three-band resistors, so you can actually read them. Red, red, yellow and uh, brown, green, green. Now, this 10K resistor up here um, is a four-band and I can't be bothered to read it so I'm just going to shove that straight in the component tester let's see what that says and it's 9657 mm, that's a bit low isn't it it's basically 10k but um, these are 1% resistors so what's 1% of 10k it'd be one it'd be 100 ohms so that shouldn't be any less than 9900 so these are either very cheap resistors or uh, we have a bad one but anyway that'll do there's a pot uh, connected to the 10k so actually 10k is fairly irrelevant as a value so that's good enough right this pot that's marked 200k um, on the actual pot itself it's got just that marking 25c I'm not familiar with uh, a marking 25c up the top it says WDK but I can't see anything on there that shows the value so that's also going to have to go in the component tester now, of course, I don't want to uh, measure between the wiper and one of the other pins. I need to measure the two rear pins. So they need to go in like that. Clamp down the TFX, TDOL, uh, ZIF socket. Looks a bit like text tool, but it's not. Okay, let's check that one. Is it 200K? 203.7. Pretty good. And I think that's it. That should be everything necessary to get the oscillator part of this uh, chip to oscillate. I've got uh, the resistor, the pot, the other resistor and the capacitor all in there. Just need to put the chip in its socket. And then we can start looking at uh, Q0, if there is a Q0, I can't remember. Uh, and all these different Q outputs to see whether we can see the uh, all the different frequency outputs from this chip. Right, the pins of this IC are all splayed out, which they normally are, so that's going to be uh, difficult to put in there. So I'm just going to have to push this down on the mat and bend that side in, and bend that side in. And uh, you can see there that I've squared them up pretty well. So that should now drop into that socket. Let's give that a try, actually. Pin one indent marker thing in the right place. Will that go in? Good, so the chip's in. If I put power to this, that should oscillate. Right, well, the oscillator does oscillate, but I've had so many problems with this. Uh, actually, mainly with the scope. I'm uh, having problems getting this uh, DSO138 scope to measure this signal. It does it. I've got uh, the scan. I can't sync it. It won't trigger. I don't know why it won't trigger. And it won't measure the frequency with the measurement system. The happy birthday sound is starting to drive me completely mad. Uh, if I put this on AC, which of course distorts the waveform, because it is a very low frequency, then the frequency measurement thing does start to work, and it's saying 4.4 uh, hertz. So it is a very low frequency, but this is a difficult scope to use, I'm discovering. I've only started using it recently because I've only recently done the mod on it. So I'm going to stop this video now uh, because I am struggling a bit. I have my other scope here because uh, I couldn't uh, make sense of what I was seeing on the DSO138. But I think I'm... Oh, shut up! That thing's driving me mad!